Alrighty, folks, with me on the phone, I got Jesse Roderick from Junkard, formerly a Filthy Still as well. How's it going, buddy? Going great. How are you guys doing? Oh, not too bad. So you got a new project going on, I see, which is hence part of the reason that we got you on here. Um, you want to talk a little bit about Junkard? Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, it's all junk instruments. It's kind of like a Filthy Still vibe, but, you know, I've, I've been playing all the instruments right now. So it's not as good. <laughs> um, right on. How long have you been working on this? Uh, basically just the pandemic. You know, I've been uh, fucking with it. I mean, I've been writing since a long time, but I just started recording probably during the pandemic when everybody was kind of cooped up. I had to do something. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing besides, uh, besides music? Are you doing anything? Uh, I'm as far as work, I guess. Full time stay at home dad right now. I uh, raise my daughter right now. She's two, and I got two stepkids too. And basically, do all the cooking and cleaning and dadding that I can do. Hey, that awesome, is, man. That hey, some, hey, sometimes like Mr. Mom gigs are like some of the best. Yeah, I agree. And every time I got a couple hours, I can run out here in the garage and start doing some music and shit. Hell yeah. Nice. Yeah. I know. Works for me. Yeah, are you still doing stuff with Forty? Yeah, me and Forty definitely uh, still hang out every couple months, every once in a while to do something. We just did Moon Runners uh, virtual fest with them, and uh, that was a good time. Right on. Where are you based out of these days? I'm in Kentucky right now, right out of Frankfurt. Okay. Yep. Okay. Had you guys uh, fare with some of the winter weather that we've had the last uh, month or so? We got snowed in pretty good. Uh, our driveway is real steep, so it's like once the oh, snow hit, you couldn't get in and out. But uh, it eventually cleared up. It wasn't too too bad. Power never power went. or anything. No, we didn't lose any power at all, so we were lucky in that sense. But yeah, yeah. crazy yeah, sometimes, weather. Sometimes it's a blessing to get snowed in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wasn't going nowhere anyway, but <laughs> I guess it was. Uh, well, right on. So, uh, going back to the the Junkard album, uh, I noticed some of the songs you put out already, didn't you? Yeah, I put some of those out on like a solo album I was doing just as like a demo. And then uh, when I finally got enough for a full length album and I decided I didn't want to just go by my real name or whatever, I just wanted to kind of make a real band out of it and hopefully start making music videos and shit like that. But uh, yeah, I, I used about half of it was already released on a solo album. Right on. You see yourself ever touring again if this uh, pandemic lifts? Yeah, I mean, I'll tour somewhat, but it's not going to be like the old days, that's for sure. Like, uh, <laughs> we're going to be all year long, and I don't think any band's going to be able to really do that anymore. I don't know. Yeah, what that's, that's what happens when you got an old lady and kids and everything. You kind of got to like, you know, scoop and everything we back down into like a couple week you know deal yeah exactly and i mean i still writing i'm actually doing more writing and playing than i used to in the actual band i mean we'd play the same 15 songs every night but besides that you never get a chance to really practice or write stuff until you finally stop yeah but, uh, yeah it's kind of hard to write and practice new shit when you're touring as much as you guys were i actually kind of imagine that to an extent when that end it might have when that ended for you it might have been a bit of a relief just to get a little bit of a break and live a bit of a little bit of normalcy you know um yeah uh, it was it didn't go straight from like band to three kids or whatever i i lived in the van by myself for like a year there first which with my dog and stuff it was fun that was good traveling around just by yourself. Even that was like a bump up instead of four people in a van. It was one person. It felt like yeah. all the room in the world. <laughs> but yes, yeah, settling down after that definitely felt good because it was like finally have a place to like same bed to sleep in every night and all that. Yeah. Well, just some normalcy and everything, and you know, like some yeah, actual like, like you know like saneness. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Exactly. Now, with like your Junkard instrument, well, with your Junkard deal, uh, what type of instruments are you playing? Are you like doing like cigar box guitars or just like normal acoustics? And 
Yeah, I mean everything. Everything's either modified or homemade. Like okay. I get. As long as I said that, as I was gonna say, I seen you got a cigar box there up behind you. Yeah, that's cool. That is sweet as hell. Yeah, that's cool. So what's that that you're holding? I play uh, back there. There's some other junk or whatever. I'll grab out if you want. But uh, it's all just stuff I'd uh, make out of junk. I don't have like money going on right now at all. So yeah, I'm just making grab some stuff and show us. Yeah, yeah, well. I wasn't gonna air this as a video, but you got so much cool shit behind you. We might as well. Yeah, like that's look at it uh it's hard to get to right now but I, i'll grab something cool i doubt it is super in tune or anything but that's the banjo bb gun right oh there. man that's sweet i used to have the same type of bb gun when i was a kid that, that's my childhood bb gun right there <laughs> nice cool man and, uh, usually you got a slide on one hand you got a slide so you can play and then go down to this thing and play on the, the one string over here it's all got pickups in it and stuff you can still oh. shoot it too so I'm going to do a weird video with that eventually. <laughs> and the electric guitar I play. I don't actually have a real electric guitar. This is what I got. I scrapped one that was falling apart. Stole the pickup out of it. Got some bones. I had, I think they're. You still have a Les Paul pickup out of it? No, it's not a Les Paul pickup. No. I thought that's I don't know, to be honest. But I just stole it out of something. This is a knife. <laughs> nice. I just have to hide in there. It's got another knife on the end over here. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed Fuck. to be kind of an yeah. thing. Uh, but yeah, I got a bunch of junk. That's uh, awesome. Cool, man. That's pretty rad. Yeah, I'm digging the new stuff, dude. I really like it. Do you record that all at home? Yeah, I just use GarageBand. I'm not uh, too technical. I literally have two microphones and like a two input thing that I have to record into GarageBand off of. But someday I'll figure it all out. I'm doing it little by little. I wouldn't even be putting all this out right now if I, if it wasn't like kind of had to the pandemic going on, you got to do something. So I figure this is better than nothing. And I got like punk rock roots. So I don't care if it's a little rough around the edges or anything. Yeah. It's kind of, the, kind of the point of the band anyway. You know what I mean? It's yeah. I mean, that's just kind of you in general, mm -hmm. a little rough around the edges, but, yeah. but in a good way. Any, anybody out there who doesn't like think they can start a band because they don't have enough equipment or whatever. It's like, you can just make whatever make it lean into it <laughs> <laughs> yeah man so um oh fuck what kind of music you've been listening to uh i've been doing like a lot of guy clark and oh Jerry Reed. Uh, they're Just coming out that documentary man uh, on, on guy clark yeah it's gonna really? be good i think yeah they've been working on it a while yeah guy clark's one of my favorites dude you said Jerry made a Bully, you know? Bully movie I never saw yet, but uh, I was planning on checking that out eventually. Just in a place Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A movie, I think they made a movie. Yeah, about him or you know what, man? I tried to watch it, and uh, I don't know. You have to watch it and let me know how you feel, but I couldn't sit through I, the whole thing. I kind of was avoiding it because I wasn't, dude, I was probably not going to love it, but I've seen some documentaries on him that were cool. Me and Owen went to his grave in Texas, and at that time, I didn't know who he was, but. Uh, I learned who he was after yeah. that. And yeah, Blaze Foley, he's an interesting cat, man. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, good, yeah. too. Very influential into a lot of great songwriters. Yep. I, uh, There's an old French fries. Yep, that's like one of my favorites. Yep. I, I love, I'm just that's my favorite place. Huh? Yeah, dude, that's great. A lot of Shel Silverstein, a lot of like, mm -hmm. uh, what else? What was I on a kick of? Uh, what the fuck was it? I'm getting into uh, like weird like metal from all over the world and like weird all different other stuff, you know, just trying to find different things to draw from. Looking at a lot of shit online about homemade instruments and things like that. Just trying to get ideas for other weird junk things I can add in. You should start selling those fucking things, yeah. Jesse. Like, dude, we have a me and dog I have a mutual friend that he was big into the cigar box guitar craze here quite a few years ago, but like just some of those, like they're pretty simple to make and they sound sweet as hell. <laughs> they are cool. And I, I, one day I might like get into like producing them like to sell or whatever, but for right now, I, I, they're really rough around the edges. I just getting them, I get them in like the right shape to play and then I'm good. I don't care about if there's like <laughs> some little scratches here and there. They don't look that pretty up close. But yeah. they work. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> it, you know, basically something that you don't care about buckle rash on the back of. <laughs> yeah. But uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I doubt I'll be selling them anytime soon, right? I just like basically trying to like make a different character for every instrument and fucking work a backstory, kind of like a comic book or something. Might uh, make a comic book at some point. Been been looking into that, drawing them up and all that shit. That'd be rad, dude. I've always like drawn and I like comic books, so I figure make some kind of weird comic up about every weird character I make up with their weird instruments. This is all in like it's baby things right now, so <laughs> it's weird. Um, what are you drinking on tonight? I got uh, Evan Williams. Ooh, there you go, the EW. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I was not paid for that sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I actually for the first time tried the uh, proper number twelve Conor McGregor whiskey tonight. Any good? Eh, for an Irish whiskey, it's not too bad. I was gonna say I'd take it over Jameson. I, I like Jameson. I kind of get like a poor person taste. I mean, honestly, Evan Williams tastes just as good as fucking any other whiskey to me. Pretty much, it's not like I think whiskey all tastes the same. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't mind it. It's uh. I, I, whiskey and water. I drink it half and half, so it's like it's yep. not uh not gonna kill me. As long as I can put a little bit of Seven Up and maybe a squirt of lime in there, it's yeah, I, it's good to me. Yeah, I just go water and whiskey there, ice too. Mm -hmm. it slows me down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably uh yeah, that's a good idea. That was my thing, man. Is I I get going too quick on it and I just become a fucking piece of shit. So. I just get sleepy now. I'm, I've, I've always been kind of a mellow, all sleep drunk. Yeah. Yeah, I, never, I don't get belligerent. <laughs> right on. Uh, you know, I'm going to try to avoid a few things, but I do want to talk about how much I loved your project, PG Allen. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that fucking, that, that project was amazing, man. From the like logo to the lyrics, dude, it was pretty genius, man. Um, I just, uh, I've been fucking around parodying that shit. Like I said, Dunkard is pretty much a comedy band. And yeah. PG Allen is basically like Weird Al too, you know? So <laughs> he was one of my favorite as a kid. So it's definitely an influence on me right there. But uh, yeah, I like to make weird, funny parodies. Of it. I might do another uh, couple songs on it. I don't know, maybe another album. Um, yeah, that uh, that one, nothing. What's the one? I, I'm gonna play it on the show. It's called "Nothing's Ever Bugged Me Quite as Much as You." Um, that one reminds me of an old George Jones song. Was it a parody of that? Uh, I was thinking about that one. It's like a little homage to it, but yeah. Kinda... Yeah, I, I thought it might because it reminds, and that's probably my favorite George Jones song. Actually, one of them for sure. Um, one of the more lighter-hearted George Jones songs, but. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that it kind of reminded me a little of that. I was wondering if it was kind of a parody of that. I like. To, I definitely like to throw little uh, like Easter eggs into the songs. You know, like there's some songs with like straight up lines stolen, but not stolen. You know, just used. You know, it's obviously supposed to be admitted. I'd be like, yeah, that's a Guy Clark line I slipped into my song. You're supposed to know that. We're <laughs> stealing it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, I think I stole one from Guy Clark too. I've stolen a couple. I've stolen a couple and not realized I did it till like a couple years later too. Like I knew I fucking heard it someplace, but couldn't figure I, it out where. I do them straight up on purpose. I'm like, that's a good line. <laughs> I'll change it slightly, but I'll make it so it's everybody will know where I got it from. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, so is there anything else you want to talk about, buddy? Uh, what have you guys been up to over there during this whole thing? What's uh, it like over there on the West Coast? Just working, man. That's what I've been doing. It's, uh, you know, I don't know how, uh, I don't know how it is in Kentucky, but the, the, the COVID laws here are pretty intense. You know, they're pretty, they take it pretty serious. Um, yeah. So we've been pretty locked down. It's hard to do shit over here right now. Did quite a bit of fishing this summer. <laughs> that was about the only thing that you could really do. Know, man. Other we're than just hanging out at home. We're lucky we're out here in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, my house has instruments and land and stuff. So I was like, there's nowhere else I'd really rather be anyway. You got to go to the supermarket. I got to go to here and there. But the well, I'd like to say that, that uh, I like sharpen my shooting skills. But with the ammunition shortage, like, <laughs> you can't even afford to go out and, like, 
you know, shoot clay pigeons or guns or anything anymore. That's, that's the worst. And uh, yep. hopefully that gets back to normal. Yeah. And Remington Arms going out of business, that kind of hit was a damper to everybody. Yeah, that shit sucks. Yep. Everything. Like, you can't, I mean, Kentucky used to be pretty easy to find ammo and guns and shit. And even everything's kind of hard to find now. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I work in a hunting ranch and, uh, like, it's hard for us right now. So. It's kind of just kind of one of those that's up in the air for the yeah. rest of the year. So, yeah. Well, hopefully it all starts straightening out. They get the the vaccines. Hopefully those start getting around a lot. And both my doses. I, Your I, lady's a teacher, right? You got hers. She got both you of got hers. How'd she do yeah. it? She the second one. She got a little like uh, fluey the second day, but it wasn't like horrible. Yeah, that was me. I I got real sick for about six hours, just a fucking yeah. bad migraine, yeah. and uh, that was about it. Though my arms yeah. kind of sore. I just got it last week, but oh no shit. But yeah, it, that, that, that's it is weird how long the the soreness of the arm sticks around. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's fine. Yeah, I'll get it whenever they come around for me. But uh, yeah, as long as they get those things out there and people take them and. The world can reopen and hopefully bands can be get back touring. Just like I said, I have no plans right now to start touring. And when, if shit opens up, I'd like the bands who sh got kicked off the road pretty much to have their shot first. You know what I mean? They, yeah, the people, especially the ones that are like the ones that do, do it as a living, you know? Yeah, the road dogs need to get back out there. Yeah, and do uh, and, you know, it's yeah. like sad to hear that you like some of your favorite bands are all like doing grocery store shit and like whatever they can, like yeah. got any kind of job they, they can get. Corpus is talking about working concrete right now. <laughs> you know, it's like. Yep. <laughs> hey man, you gotta get back to the roots sometimes though. Make sure music even better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm lucky I've always kind of liked to just build shit. I've been doing a lot of leather work too. Like wow. making a lot of shit out of leather. Dude, that's awesome. Like leather craft is a, uh, is a, like a, is a like, Kind of a trailing art that's going away. Kind of like blacksmith. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yes. The random well, shit. Like, dude, like custom, like custom leather holsters and stuff go for a pretty penny. Yeah, and I'm just starting. Like I said, I started all, like, I might have been doing a little, like a year or two, but not like as much as I've been doing it during this whole thing. So it's made me sharpen my skills a little bit. But I'm not quite there yet. To be selling anything yeah you'll get there you guys see a ghost <laughs> well no but we are this is the new ruckus headquarters and it's a little like we're figuring things out so the door doesn't shut right and the bathroom doesn't work so he just went outside to take a piss and the door's open and i don't think he wants to go shut it because fucking it makes a lot of noise when you shut it so uh i'm kind of looking over there to see if it'll open up it's right off main street in Habner too so it's like You've been to heaven. It looks good. Yeah. I, I, dude, I loved it over there. Yeah, man. You played here quite a bit, right? Like, what did you play? You played Ruckus one year. That was my favorite year, Ruckus, too. Uh, the second year when Sean and Xander were here. You guys were here. Whiskey Dick, uh, Jake Orvis and Honeycutt did the solo set. It was just good. That was my favorite year. Uh, financially, it was, it was, it broke even that year. So it wasn't a train wreck. And, Pretty stress free, pretty great bands. And honestly, between you and Felix Thursday, you guys were like the only other band that ever stayed at the uh, old Dogwater, <laughs> the OG Dogwater compound, is what yeah. we should call it. I'd be on that list. <laughs> yeah, you guys back in the trailer. You rode in from Portland that night too because you guys didn't have a place to stay. I think that sounds about right. Yeah. Every time we get to a giant city, it's always like, nope, nobody here, and you can't sleep at the Walmart either. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, that I uh, got it. You guys did. I'm trying to figure out how many times you fucking played here. You played here a lot, I think. Um. I can't remember how many, but I uh definitely remember it was a bunch. My memory for all that touring time is all mashed together into like one big weird. Trip. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys stayed at my old lady's apartment one time. When you came up here too, I remember your bass player was telling me about his vaping, his tobacco or his uh, nicotine vaping, and 
Yep. We sat there. Right. Did something. I can't remember though. Yeah. I was pretty high on fucking shit back then. If you want me to be honest, usually if there was a show going on, I was eating some kind of pain pill. So things are a yeah. bit fuzzy. <laughs> I drink a little bit too much back then. <laughs> Old Vico by Harris. Yeah. But yeah, so I, yeah, I think you guys played here at least three times, though. That I can that right. Yeah, it was fun. I, I liked it over there. I kind of, where I'm at right now kind of reminds me of uh, where you're at over there, except for the hills are smaller. The hills are smaller, <laughs> yeah. I bet. And it's probably a little bit greener, I'm going to bet, if you're in Kentucky. Yeah, it's, it gets green. It definitely gets green. It's green cows. in the time, but it does not stay that way for very long. By yeah, about maybe. June, it's deader than shit already. I remember it being real pretty up there, though. Yeah. Yep. It's home. Yeah, man. Well. Oh, you got a surgery coming up too, don't you, man? Yeah, I got. I get it. Well, I I got my surgery on my sinuses a couple like a week ago, so I just stopped like snorting out blood from that, and now I got to get <laughs> a tooth pulled in two days to finish that up. They so and then okay. I should be. So they're going to pull the tooth last? That's kind of weird. You told me that the tooth grew into your sinuses. Yeah, Why? I don't know. I think they pull the tooth and then they'd fix the sinuses. I guess when the lady looked in my uh, whatever scan I got, she was like, yeah, we got to get this done before they can do anything with the tooth there. Hmm. Like, I don't know why. That's just what she said. <laughs> yeah, all right. It was particularly bad or something. I have no idea. But they get me all scraped out good and... Now I'm gonna get that tooth pulled. I actually almost can't wait. I get that fucking thing out, and then I'll fucking be cured. I haven't had health insurance for ten years, and I got the the emergency COVID health care that they were giving out. So nice. I finally jumped on, get a bunch of shit done real fast, and then they'll fucking probably take it away immediately. <laughs> so, so are they gonna put like cadaver bone like up in there when they pull your tooth, or I don't know. I think they're just gonna yank it and hope that it doesn't do anything too bad <laughs> i don't think they, they don't seem that worried about it they're just the lady who did my nose is like okay you're good now just go get that pulled and you should be fine i have another checkup in a week after that too with her so i'll be fine i just want to get it all done with they kicked back my oh. surgery too they didn't accept it. it the insurance won't accept it but uh we're fighting with that right now i i think the person we talked to said we should probably be fine they'll figure it out cool. i ain't paying that shit that's for sure <laughs> Hey, uh, that's the first question I asked. You need a surgery. I was like, does the health insurance cover it? And they're like, yes, it should. I was like, I'm not doing it unless it covers it. So <laughs> if it didn't cover it. You can fucking take it up with that doctor. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, you sound good. Um, are you feeling better now or is it still pretty painful? Yeah. No, the last few days it was, it was like painful and then it was fine. And then it got painful again. For, and then it just like yesterday or the day before it just started getting back to pretty much normal. what they do to you? They just going to scrape it out and shit or what? Yeah. Scraped it out a bunch and opened it up and cut some stuff out of there and then packed it full of stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> could have done nothing for all I know. Just That's a technical, a technical <laughs> term for the things that happen. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know what the surgery is called. Endoscopic something or other. Oh, but. <laughs> sounds hot. Yeah, <laughs> cool video of it somewhere on the internet now. <laughs> Endoscopic adenoid scraping. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I'm get that tooth pulled out, and I'll be a happy camper. Hell yeah, man. Good man. Maybe uh, I'll make a guitar out of it or something. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. They actually, I don't think they let you keep it. Man. Oh man, so uh, that'd be a cool like tune. I, I got to keep it last time because I already got one tooth really? pulled in the beginning of this whole fucking pandemic. So this will be huh. number two. Really? So because Mick, Mick Foley from uh, WWE um, had this notorious tooth that flew out his nose when he wrestled the Undertaker in Hell in the Cell match, and they choke slammed him, and they had a botch. Which, if you're not a fan of wrestling, like a botch is like you know when something goes wrong in a wrestling match, and they were on this fucking 20 foot cell probably 20 feet it might have even been taller than that but the undertaker choke slammed him on top of it and the cage gave away and it wasn't supposed to so he just went through the fucking top of it fell in the middle of the ring like you can see like undertaker in the footage like he literally like he's like thinks he killed him 
but his tooth <laughs> got knocked out somehow and came through his nose. But anyways, they ended up managing to put it back in and he had it in his in his gums for like, you know, another 20 years and finally it got infected. So they're like, dude, we just got to pull it. But they wouldn't let him keep the fucking tooth. So it was like, like super upset. I was gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say, that's a world famous tooth. I'm like, like how you can probably fuck? like do you not let that man keep his tooth? At least get a million bucks on eBay for that or something. What was that? <laughs> what state was he in when it happened? Yeah, that's another thing. It's probably the state. Mm-hmm. I bet. Yeah, fuck, I don't. Know. Uh, fuck it, you can have the tooth. Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would have probably flew to it if I was that rich. I was gonna and, say. Uh, about eight years ago, when I had four wisdom teeth pulled, I got to keep all four of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I said they wouldn't let him for some reason. Mm-hmm. Probably in California. Mm-hmm. Because he's famous, they're not really, if they know nobody really cares, they're like, sure, take the tooth, whatever. But they don't want it all over the news. The dentist office gives out fucking teeth after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dentist office gives out teeth for people to sell the spray paint can <laughs> companies for the rattles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bunch of Christians are gonna be, uh, yeah, picketing yeah. Dennis soon. <laughs> oh well, oh well, it gives him something else to pick up besides Planned Parenthood. So exactly. yeah, there you go. Maybe he should have done that. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Fuck. But yeah. I'll get that done. I'll be happy, and uh, I get, I already have like another album's worth of material ready to go, so I might start recording that soon, and like. Since I can't really tour too much anymore, and nobody really can, I, I think I might just be the person that just writes a million songs and records them all and puts them all out and just see what happens. So the next next few, are you going to go kind of along the same style? Like you said, you kind of think that these ones are funny, or are you going to go a little more serious ever? I'll probably stick with funny, you know, to be honest. Like, I kind of needed a goofier outlet anyway. Like, serious songs, I like them and all, but after I write them, sometimes I feel cringy about them, and I'm like, eh. Yeah. The goofy ones, were like, ah, whatever, they're silly, they make people laugh. They're yeah, just, I can listen to them myself without being like, ah, yeah, you probably think it's cringy because you're putting yourself out there. It's a lot easier to write a goofy song because you're not putting your feelings yeah. out there. I'll stick with easy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's kind of funny. You listen to all this uh, guy Clark and stuff like that, but you're uh, more yeah. happy to put out a little funnier hey, yeah. stuff. He's got a lot of funnier ones too. He does, mm-hmm. man. I actually like that. Same with uh, John Prine's kind of the same way too. Mm-hmm. I love John Prine. He's one of my favorites, and that's like, you can, if you can do serious and then put up up against like three funny songs and then do your serious song, like on that on the Junkard album, there's a serious one or two in there, and yeah, I just kind of like sprinkle them in there. Most people can deal with one or two, but like if you put the whole album of like sad bastard songs, unless you're George Jones or something, it's hard to pull off, you know? Yeah, but. I don't know, I not George Jones. Him. I think even George Jones did that, man. Yeah, you listen to a little like a white oh, yeah. or you know, something like our high tech redneck in there or something. I think, I think they all kind of knew that they had to even them out a little bit until certain people got like pegged as the sad guy, and then all their songs had to be sad after that, you know. I feel like Towns Van Zant fell into that hole, you know. Yeah, 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 you're right. And he probably, I don't know, you kind of I feel like he had some funnier ones too in his early days, but I can't remember. There's some talking blue songs that were funny, and there's definitely funny in there. And honestly, I don't listen to to him for his funny really. Like I, when I'm sad, that's where I go to. I want to hear another person who's sad in the same mindset, you know? Yeah, yeah, he he lived that shit, man. Townsend's hand was definitely a interesting character. He. Huffed fucking rubber cement for so long he glued his mouth shut. Or... <laughs> yeah. Well, hell, if we're going to talk about Huffers, then Jessica White's the fucking <laughs> Huffman's king of the world. So Yeah, but. Or uh, Didi Ramone, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was Didi a Huffer? I was not too much into the Ramones. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, I was definitely, definitely a Ramones guy. I liked them as a kid. I still do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I didn't know that he was a huffer. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, all the kids want to sniff some glue. He he definitely was sniffing some shit. <laughs> gabba gabba wee, gabba gabba hey. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep chain smoking. I got like a couple hours off tonight, so I'm going to just like drink and smoke the whole fucking time. That'll help you. Can... <laughs> I'm going to pretend... I'm going to pretend this interview is still going on like an hour after you even log off or whatever. <laughs> Just to get away. 
That's it was, a, it was a blustering four and a half hour interview. Yeah, this guy is fucking, they might edit it short, so don't be surprised if the interview comes out a little shorter than I was uh, out there for. It was an <laughs> Oprah interview. <laughs> You're getting the TV. You're getting the vacuum. <laughs> You're getting the car. God damn, Oprah, over. why are you coming to my house? <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm glad to be talking to you guys. Who'd you have on last time? I was uh, going through your library. Uh, I had Abraham and the old God. Do you know that guy? No, I don't know him. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, he's good, man. He uh, played fiddle for Lauren Walker Madsen. I don't know if you ever did any shows with Lauren. No, I didn't, but that's uh, that's awesome. Uh, who you got next? Um, I don't know who we're going to do next, actually. Um I've got for the double talking because I do one that's a little longer. I'm gonna actually do a little different style. I got a stand-up comedian coming on this week. Hell yeah! Um, and I've got a. I think I'm gonna do this uh, kind of in-depth interview with my trans friend who grew up in Hebner, and we're gonna kind of talk about her experiences, and I'm gonna kind of ask her some harder questions. I think too, like <clears throat> maybe some stuff that sounds like good. yeah sounds good yeah and then uh i'm trying to think we've got some other people i think gary Lindsay's agreed to come on we just don't know when uh bob wayne's agreed to come on uh it's been great man like we started out kind of slow but uh, uh we've been getting a lot of attention over the last few weeks and been doing some stuff oh yeah dude we have a couple I'm local sure anybody a couple local type folks that maybe will come on for a filler here or there but yeah mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, no, like that's awesome. Uh, there are a lot of people would be down to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're gonna wanna... do a monthly thing with Kevin from Stone Evergreen Travelers because he hell yeah he works at a um, he works for a weed farm. So we're gonna have him come on and talk about weed. And uh, awesome. I uh, I worked out west a little bit there, and uh, you guys got it right over there. I can't wait till they if they federally legalize, man, that'll be fucking great. Yeah, because uh, to be honest with you guys in those Bible Belt states, like I could legal cannabis is going to be a long, long, pretty. Yeah, I can process, see even if say. it's even if it's. Uh, I can imagine that even if it goes legal federally, you guys are still going to have to fucking wait a while because uh, you're going to have to. It's going to be like footloose with the weed. <laughs> with you guys. I agree. And the the one thing is it's a business thing where like even yeah. the businessmen want to grow hemp already. They want to grow everything. So it's like farmers out here actually just want weed to be legal. And there's a lot of farmers out here. So but at least like, if, it's legal, if at least if it's legal federally, maybe you can drive someplace like an Indian reservation might sell it and you can go get it someplace closer, you know. Yeah, there's a bunch of states that border here that are good and like I don't know. It, it's got to happen eventually. Nobody gives a shit. So, like, I think it's going to happen real soon. Yeah. Unless, I mean, you know, as Joe Biden's running his mouth, which he probably is. Who knows? But yeah. I get, I, I, I say another 10 to 20 years I don't before know. it's federally legal. I don't think it'll be that long. I think there's going to be, I think there's going to be so many states that have it legalized, like Oregon, you know, Washington, yeah. the rest of us that do that. People will just be like, why don't you just move to one of those states? And yeah, well, like, exactly. You're like, they're going to be, well, you know, you can drive over there for a couple hours and, you know. Yeah. Because honestly, when this, like, all this shit started happening was like, you know, Portland, Seattle, Denver, especially. I know a couple LA, you know, a couple California cities. They're doing a lot of like cannabis tourism to where like yep. they take people around to like, you know, they rent like uh, load them up on like a you know like a senior citizen type bus and you know they go around to like different grow sites a couple of dispensaries you know kind of like what they would like what they used to do with like uh brewery tours they're kind of doing the same thing with dispensary and grow op tours it's like it's just goes to show it's really not that big a fucking deal guys come on it's just it, exactly it's a fucking plan yeah. it's not like you're fucking going out and you know robbing banks and shit when you smoke it or eat it or whatever or however method that you take it mm -hmm. but that's i not. swear like half the trump supporters i've ever met smoke weed themselves it's like, exactly exactly there are all these anti-weed people that i've never met and I mean, the other half fucking all in church. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't, I can't, I literally never met anybody who's like, people who smoke weed should go to jail. I've literally never met anybody, even my most Christian aunt would be like, well, maybe let's just find them or something. Like, I don't know, like, <laughs> he, he needs he needs a little bit of Jesus after that joint he smokes, and he'll be he'll be on the straight and narrow. Like, I, I, I have the same type of aunt. I have the same type of aunt, man. So well, all all the aunts and whatever you have children and nephews that are all like getting caught with weed. Like, don't you, yeah. don't you rather they have that on their record? <laughs> <laughs> exactly the, the the same aunt that we're talking about the the net the her her son's one of my biggest smoking buddies so you know <laughs> what what can you say la vie i guess you know we have good old-fashioned duis they don't have fucking any weed fucking bus like i don't know it, it's just ridiculous yeah it's fucking dumb it, I mean, it's just like it's nobody's fucking business, anyways. What you do, you know, as long as you're not hurting somebody when you're doing it. And the problem, I mean, weed isn't making anybody hurt anybody, you know. Well, not to mention, like, it, I'd rather be putting money into like a small business's pocket instead of fucking some drug dealer who you don't know where the fuck his money's going or where he's getting it or what's going on there. It's like, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, you know the, and you know what? Honestly, at first. The prices were a lot higher, but now it's cheaper. That was yeah, everybody's yeah. main hang up. It's going to be so expensive. Now it's fucking cheaper. Yeah, Dude, I bought, you get a gram for like three bucks. Now. I bought an $80 ounce the other day. <laughs> so, like, you know, back in the day, well, back when I first started smoking, like, a fucking ounce is like 220 bucks. Mm-hmm. Like, it was shit, too. Full of stems, seeds, fucking. Yeah, yeah you get out the really hammer good. for. You had an ounce of bammer for 80 bucks, but fuck, you had to pick through it for an hour and you end up with about a quarter by the time mm-hmm. you're done picking through it. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean, even like people who don't smoke should just ha- know that people should just have the freedom to choose for themselves. You know what I mean? It's, ex- exactly. And, uh, and that's the, the exact point of it. Like, when what I was in high school, what was harder to get, weed or booze when you're in high school? It was mm-hmm. like, we you actually had to find somebody with an ID ID to go fucking buy it for you, and they'd have to put themselves on the line to go do that. So that would be hard to get the you know, weed. It was just like you know some weird guy, and he'd give you weed. You didn't ask any questions. Like See, right that's here. kind of a shitty thing. Like we we were the exact opposite. It was way easier to find somebody to go down and buy us a couple of cases of beer than it was for you know to go over to somebody's house and well, sell some eighth or a quarter of weed. That was because weed was viewed like meth around no and exactly you know? we're we're you know a small very rural christian town yeah. weed weed was just if you were a weed smoker you were just like a crackhead christian yeah, yeah christian, <laughs> christian on sunday and you know whiskey <laughs> slamming on saturday down at the elks club <laughs> It's like maybe hop in your car after and drive home or whatever. And, and no, exactly, exactly. They fucking get in their car, drive home, drive twenty miles out in the country, and fucking put other people in danger because yeah. their spouse yeah. is probably giving them roadhead the whole fucking way out there or mm-hmm. something. You know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just like I smoke. If I smoke, I want to just sit down and watch TV. You know. Exactly. I'm not, even, I'm not admitting that I do though, because I'm here in Kentucky. <laughs> well, isn't uh, the blue dress stand though? So, <laughs> like, <laughs> that blue dress, you know, mixed with that, that good sativa. Yep. But, I don't know. It's stupid. It's one country. We should have like one law about it, I guess. I don't mind there being dry counties where they fucking don't sell and they don't have dispensaries and shit. That's fine. Yeah. If they don't want the town to have all those dispensaries around. I understand, whatever. But to throw people in jail for this shit, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. So you watch any good movies or TV shows lately? Uh not really. I'm kind of just re-watching old shit Futurama right now and Futurama. Uh, whatever. Oh, third thing I binge watched like all the King King of the Hills last year. Yeah, I might do that one uh soon too, because uh I'm about to finish Futurama. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all the King yeah, Hills are on Hulu yeah. now. Yeah, that's uh, I'm borrowing somebody's Hulu right now, so I think I'll uh, use that for future, uh, King of the Hill next. <laughs> yeah, King of the Hill is my one of my favorites. King of the Hill, some Letter Kenny on Hulu. 
Um, oh yeah, there's Letter Kenny's on there. I'm not a huge Letter Kenny guy. I love Letter Kenny. I'm not either, man. I tried to watch an episode. And I was like, this isn't made for me. Yeah, Everybody I'm a Trailer Park Letter Boys guy. Man. <laughs> I like Trailer Park Boys, but uh, Letter Kenny just didn't have it for me. I don't know. Yeah, if, if I'm going Canadian humor, I'm going for the boys. I'm See, for- I guess I'm I'm just the exact opposite. I I love Letter Kenny, and I've never really been a huge Trailer Park Boys fan myself. So yeah, I mean. Trailer Park Boys started dropping off there at the end there, but uh, I mean it's still going know. really. It is? All right, well, never mind. So, that shows the shows you're not too into it. <laughs> I, I'm not. Uh, I, I kind of lost interest in Trailer Park Boys too, but uh, I don't know. I just I liked it for a while. It was really good for a long time, but then I just I don't know. I moved on. Yeah, maybe it'll be funny again if I checked it up. Yeah, it's it's not as good as it used to be. I feel like. They started doing like guest stars and shit all the time, and I was just like, uh, yeah. okay. I was like, all right, whatever. That's kind of where it lost a lot of people. I kind of liked it though, still. It was fine. It wasn't horrible. I've seen worse TV, but uh, well, yeah, yeah anything with our uh, ex president <laughs> on it was way worse. So. Yeah, I uh, see it like it. <laughs> Fox News, CNN, Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> Any of the old Apprentice episodes, you know. That small scene in Home Alone 2. <laughs> the uh, yeah, the one weird. episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> I guess know. Macaulay Culkin yeah, is like there's one one too. getting out of it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos of, like just old guy crafts, like leather work and fucking carving and like just any little thing I can do during nap time. Nice. What? You begin into blaze smithing here, and, you know, no time flat. Be building yeah, a forge. <laughs> I already made new scales for all my knives and stuff. Oh, I, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, yeah, I did the scales on this one and the leather sheath, but yeah, like. Sweet, man. What's the handle made of? That's... I don't even know, man. It's just a piece of wood I had laying around. Okay. Burned That's it all so up. Cool. But nothing fancy, just. I even laying around, just like fuck with it until it's slightly cooler looking. <laughs> right on. But, uh, well, shit, Jesse. I think we're about to run out of time on the old Zoom, buddy. So I probably should wrap right, this up. All right, man. I hope you uh, best of luck with this whole thing, dude. I'm, I'll be listening to uh, all the things when they come out. Yeah, man. Appreciate you coming on. It was good to see you. Uh, it's oh, been yeah, a long man. time, man. And uh, I know, dude. Just keep catching up. I was really happy to hear some music from you too, man. Like, uh, uh, we were actually about a week before you popped up with the new Junkard stuff. We were talking about you on dog or talking about you on the episode because we did like a whole episode about how like like the original Dog Water and the music that influenced it and mm-hmm. stuff. Because our formats changed a little bit nowadays because we just can't do things like we used to. Um, <clears throat> F's, like you know the laws have changed a lot we can't play anything yeah, we don't have permission to we just really yeah. can't play anything that we don't have permission to play anymore we used to play like whatever we wanted and nobody cared yeah. you know now if you I play because um, when i went to put this shit on a uh, distro kit or whatever you could pay more and have it so they check youtube for your shit and make sure nobody's playing it on there and like i didn't click that because i'm not paying any extra money you know yeah <laughs> but uh I wonder if anybody ever did click that. They might kick well, back your Well, I know. There was a podcast called It Burns When I Pee, and they yeah. were having problems playing uh, Urban Pioneers. Yeah, because they, they might have clicked that button on DistroKid to get their – it's worth it. If you're going to make a little money off it, you kind of got to do it. I mean – yeah but, uh, it it's kind of a wicked up. beast man the the, B, the bmi shit and the ascap shit it's I'm, I have to, you have to be like one of them and i had to be bmi or whatever i hate it. it sucks like what the fuck is this i like unions i just this is a weird union it's not but, uh, for me man i've never put any of my shit on there and i probably should i'm getting to the point where i've been thinking about it but my thing is i don't like uh i don't fucking like how they treat venues they, yeah, tend, that's, they tend to suck the dick of bigger venues and then they just pirate the shit out of the little ones, you know, like, I know that's what I remember. That's why I didn't, I was like, had to choose between ASCAP and BMI. And I remember ASCAP would come to our local venue and they'd put a plant in the audience. And if you covered a fucking, a goddamn Slayer song or whatever, they'd fucking tattle on you. And then the bar would get a fucking strike or whatever. And 
I don't know, man. It was I was like, well, fuck ASCAP. Then BMI probably does the same exact shit just as hey, bad. Dude, and I think it's funny because BMI is the strong one over here. So I wonder if it's just a little more where yeah, you're at the country. That's, literally the, that's why I chose BMI. And I'm like, this one sucks too. But yeah, it's like a weird, every musician already has like a bad taste in their mouth with both of those things. The fucked up thing is, is they pick, they, it's a local musician usually that they fucking plan yeah. in there. So it's like somebody that's supposed to be your homie and looking out for the music venues and they're fucking rats, you know? Yeah, and exactly. they're probably exactly. making a little extra money from them or whatever. It's bullshit. Yeah, they probably get a little bit of money, but at the same time, it's like, who the fuck cares? And I don't know, man. It's the fact of the matter is that's if they're that's, getting like if they're getting like cover bands, straight up cover bands, if they want to go after like fucking bad fish or whatever, that's fine. But like yeah. Well, the know. thing is, is they don't go after the band. They go after the venue. How come the, the, the band know. doesn't have to pay that shit? Mm -hmm. exactly. That's what pisses me off, too. The band is making a career and thousands of dollars. What cover bands make is fucking stupid. And they don't have to pay a dime to cover other people's shit. Exactly. But as long I as they're not like cutting albums, they don't need to. But the venues are paying out the ass to have that shit. It fucking irritates me. I wish like a good one would come along and just fuck them, piss them all off. But they've been there so long. They're like the big government of fucking music. I know. Well, it's so bad that even if you're going to start your own publishing company, you've got to go through one of them, you know? So. Yep. And, uh, I mean, I'm bad at all the whole internet thing anyway, but like I, I was always wondering about that. Like if I play one of my own songs, on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, is it gonna kick back at me and be like, nope, you're fucked? No, but if you play one of your songs live at a venue, they want the venue to pay them for it. Gee, nice. Yeah, that's how, uh, that's how it was explained to me. I feel real bad for the bar owners right now. I mean, the bands obviously, get, I, I obviously have fucking a lot of feelings for them, man, because I can feel, I, I mean, if I was still touring when this shit went down, I don't even know what I'd be doing. Mm -hmm. I, I would be like, I'd be fucked. But the bars too, it's like, there's going to be a whole different landscape to even try to book through now. It's going to be, you're going to go through your list and it's going to be like, nope, all these bars are closed and I have to start over. And fucking anybody who's booking shows right now is probably crossing fucking names off their list every fucking five seconds. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's going to be survivor of the survival of the fittest, man. It looks like things are starting to open back up. So, you know, I'm trying to be optimistic, but I I don't think I've personally seen any venues that I like and work with have to close, close their doors yet. But Jesus Christ, man, none of them are doing well, you know? Yep. I don't yep. think anybody's doing well. <laughs> Yeah, but they'll tell you the, the live music venues. Yeah, are, the live music venues. Are you really know, cool. honestly, it hasn't affected me financially but since nah, now that I'm a, I'm essential, yeah. man. I've been fine, you know. I've been through harder shit <laughs> myself, you know. And I've, I've been, like, homeless on paper since I was, like, before I dropped out of high school. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, like, I didn't get any stimulus check. They're like, nah, you don't need shit. You don't need shit because... <laughs> You've made this work long enough. Somehow you fucking, you don't need any money. <laughs> you didn't have any money. Now you still don't have any money. Everything's the same. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> well, all right, buddy. I think I'm going to let you go for good. Thanks for coming right, on, man. No problem, dude. Great to see you. Yeah, let's talk, a little, let's talk a little bit more about, you know, those other things we're talking about, too. Yeah. So. That sounds good. All right, later, buddy. Later, man.